Welcome back, mathematicians. Today's topic is factors, multiples, prime numbers, and composite numbers. The first thing we're going to look at are the even numbers. The even numbers are 2, 4, 6, and so on. They are the numbers divisible by 2. The odd numbers are 1, 3, 5, and so on. These are the numbers that are not divisible by 2. Let's look at factors. If we say 30 divided by 5, the answer is 6. We therefore say that 5 is a factor of 30. 6 would also be a factor of 30. The factors of any number always divide exactly into that number without leaving a remainder. So if we have a look at the factors of 6, we can see the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Because 1 times 6 will be 6, 2 times 3 is 6. When we talk about the factors, or when we list the factors, we always use an F for factors. And if we're talking about the factors of 6, it is a little footnote. One way to remember factors is by saying factors fit in. And then what I can do is I can make these two division signs on this side. So when I divide a number, by another number and it leaves no remainder, then that number is a factor of the original number. Multiples. 4 multiplied by any whole number will result in a multiple of 4. So for example, 4 times 1 will give you 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12, so 4, 8, 12, and so on are multiples of 4. How do we remember that? Well, once again, we are doing multiples of 4, and the 4 is a little footnote at the bottom. So multiples, to generate a list, we are going to use the multi tables and those are multiples. Let's look at the prime numbers. Prime numbers only have two factors and those two factors are one and itself. So let's list the prime numbers. The prime numbers are two 3, 5, 7, 11. 9 is not a prime number because it has more than two factors. What is so special about 2? Well, 2 is the only even prime number. Let's look at the composite number numbers. Well, We've looked at the prime numbers, so all the other numbers are the composite numbers, and they have more than two factors. So prime numbers have two factors, composite numbers have more than two factors. Now what is so special about 1? How many factors does 1 have? Well, we only have 1 multiplied by 1, so 1 is neither prime nor composite. Let's look at prime factors. Well, we know what prime numbers are. Prime means it is only divisible by one and itself. Factors, well, factors divide into a number without leaving a remainder. So, what are prime factors? Prime factors of a given number are those factors that are prime numbers. 
Right. If we look at the factors of 6 again, all the factors are 1, 2, 3, and 6. But the prime factors, we have to select the prime factors. 1 is neither prime nor composite. 2 is a prime number. 3 is a prime number. 6 is a composite number. So the prime factors are 2 and 3. And once again, you can see you write a little footnote to donate to denote that we are looking at the prime factors of 6. Now we use prime factors when we factorize a number or when we write a number as a product of its prime factors. And to do this, we use the ladder method. That's the end of the notes. I will now go into explaining the examples. The worked examples. The first thing we're going to do is write 24 as a product of its prime factors. So I know that 24 is 8 multiplied by 3. 3 is already a prime factor. 8, the prime factors of 8 are 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. So 24 will equal, instead of 8, I'm going to say 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3. We always arrange, or we try and arrange the numbers in ascending order. Once we've done that, we write it as a product of its prime numbers in exponential form. How many 2's have I got multiplied together? Well, I have 3. So 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 3 is 24 written as a product of its prime numbers, prime factors. The second example, write 90 as a product of its prime factors. Well, we will use the ladder method. And so 90, what, uh, what prime number will go into 90? So what I think in my head, I make a list of the first few prime numbers. 2, 3, 5, 7, and so on. I'm going to take 5 because 90 ends in a 0, so I know that 5 will go into 90. So 5 goes into 9 once, remainder 4. 5 goes into 40 8 times. What prime number will divide exactly into 18? Well, I could take 3 or 2. So 3 into 18 goes 6. 6 threes are 18, no remainder. What prime factor will go into 6? Well, 2. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 will go into 3 once. When we prime factorizing, your answer at the end will always be 1. Please check that all these numbers are prime numbers. Don't fall into the trap of saying 90 divided by 10 because 10 is not a prime number. So when we write this out, so the prime factors of 90 so 90 equals, I write these, remember I said in ascending order, 2 multiplied by, I've got two threes multiplied by 5. We write it in exponential form, so we've got 2 multiplied by, we've got two threes multiplied together, so it's 3 to the power of 2 multiplied by 5. That is 90 prime factorized. Stop your video or pause it and please 
consider this. When we prime factorizing, it is good to be able to run through the divisibility rules in your head. So a number is divisible by 2 if the last digit is a 0, 2, 4, 6 or 8. So when I'm looking for divisibility by 2, all I do is I look at the last digit. When I do divisibility by 3, the sum of the digits. So here I will be saying 4 plus 7 plus 1. 7 and 4 is 11 plus 1 equals 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So 471 is divisible by 3. Divisibility by 4. The last two digits must be divisible by 4. 4 goes into 24 six times. Divisibility by 5, the last digit must be a 5 or a 0. So that number is divisible by 5. If I want to do divisibility by 6, it must be an even number. And then I've got to add the digit. So 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 is divisible by 3. So it's divisible by 2. And it's divisible by 3, so 84 is divisible by 6. When I do divisible by 8, I look at the last three digits. So I say 18 to 35 goes 4 eighths or 32, remainder 3. 18 to 32 goes 4, so that number is divisible by 8. Divisibility by 9, I add the digits. 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 7 equals 3 and 2 is 5 and 6 is 11 and 7 is 18. 18 divided by 9 is 2, so that number is divisible by 9. Divisibility by 10, the last digit has to be a 0. 11 is quite a tricky one because it says the sum of every second digit. So 4 plus 2 is 6. So the sum of every second digit is 6. The sum of the remaining digits, 0 plus 6 is 6. So 6 minus 6 will give me naught. When I do the subtraction, it either has to equal naught or be divisible by 11. Use these rules to now test your understanding, which you will find on page 12.